Hello everyone, this is Zia Kalpana here in this video. We are going to solve the differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get the problem. Solve d square plus 16 into y equals to e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. So firstly, let's find the order and degree of the given differential equation. d square plus 16 into y equals to e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. Identify the highest derivative. Here d square is the highest derivative. So our order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree. Okay. Highest power of the highest derivative is our degree. Degree is 1. Or we can just write the given differential equation as d square y plus 16 y equals to e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. Right? We know that d is a differential operator and d square can be written as d square by dx square. We can write d square y as d square y by dx square plus 16 y equals to e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. Now identify the highest derivative here d square y by dx square is the highest derivative so our order will be 2 and the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree, degree is 1, right? Now coming to the problem. We are given a differential equation which is in operator form. f of d into y equals to q where f of d equals to d squared plus 16 and q equals to e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. Right? Now what we have to do? We need to find the general solution to the given differential equation which is non-homogeneous and the general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp here yc is a complementary function and yp is a particular integral. We will get yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation. Simply take RHS to 0 then we will get f of d into y equals to 0 which is a homogeneous equation to the given non-homogeneous equation and we will get yp using 1 by f of d into q. Right. Now let us find complementary function using the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the non-homogeneous equation, right? So, let's see. The auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to we are having f of d equals to d square plus 16, right? Just replace this differential operator d by m. Then we will get f of m equals to m square plus 16. Then our auxiliary equation will be m square plus 16 equals to 0. Now, we can find roots in two ways. Take this plus 16 to RHS, we will get m square equals to minus 16, then m equals to plus or minus square root of minus 16, write this square root of minus 16 as minus 1 into 16, again split the root, we get plus or minus square root of minus 1 into square root of minus 16, we know that, sorry square root of 16, we know that square root of minus 1 is i and square root of 16 is 4, right? Is equals to plus or minus i into 4 or plus or minus 4i or you can write plus 16 as minus of minus 16. Now write this minus 16 as minus 1 into 16. Then we know that i square equals to minus 1 and 
4 square equals to 16, right? Replace minus 1 by i square and 16 by 4 square. Right? You can write i square into 4 square as 4i whole square. Now this is of a square minus b square form. You can write it as a plus b into a minus b. Now we equate each factor to 0. From m plus 4i to 0, you will get m equals to minus 4i. And from m minus 4i to 0, you will get m equals to 4i. Right? Then m equals to minus 4i and plus 4i. Simply, we can just write this as m equals to plus or minus 4i. Right? So, we got complex conjugate roots. Real part is 0. And we have only imaginary parts, so we can call it as purely imaginary roots. Therefore, m equals to plus or minus 4i are the roots of our auxiliary equation, right? Which are complex conjugate. If a plus ib is a complex number, then its conjugate will be a minus ib. If a minus ib is a complex number, then a plus ib will be its conjugate. Right? So, if we have a pair of complex numbers, say complex conjugate. Okay? If we get complex conjugate numbers like this, then... The complementary function will be e power ax into one constant into cos bx plus the other constant into sine bx. If a is 0, then we will get e power 0x which is equal to e power 0 into c1 cos bx plus c2 sine bx. We know that e power 0 is 1, right? Then we'll get 1 into C1 cos Bx plus C2 sin Bx, which is equal to C1 cos Bx plus C2 sin Bx. Now, our complementary function will be yc equals to c11 constant into cos for b equals to 4, right? For b equals to 4, you get 4x plus c2 sin 4x. Now, let's find particular integral. We know that yb equals to 1 by f of d into q gives the required particular integral. 1 by f of d for f of dt squared plus 16 into q. We have q e power minus 3x plus cos 4x. Again, we can write this as 1 by f of d into e power minus 3x plus 1 by f of d into cos 4x. If you want, you can find first term and second term separately, right? By naming them. Okay? Here, yp1 represents the first term and yp2 represents the second term. Firstly, we will find yp1. 1 by 4 of d into e power minus 3x. Here this is of 1 by f of d into e power ax form for a equals to minus 3. Right? We 
have f of d equals to d square plus 16. Now let's find f of a for a equals to minus 3. f of minus 3 replace d by minus 3. Then we'll get minus 3 whole square plus 16 equals to minus 3 whole square is 9 plus 16 equals to 25. Since f of minus 3 is non-zero, so what we can do? We can just replace d by minus 3. Minus 3, 1 by minus 3 whole square plus 16 into e power minus 3x, which is equal to 1 by minus 3 whole square is 9 plus 16 into e power minus 3x, which is equal to 1 by 25 into e power minus 3x. Therefore, yp1 equals to 1 by 25 into e power minus 3x. Now let's find yp2. yp2 equals to 1 by f of t into cos 4x. So this is a 1 by f of d into cos ax from 4a equals to 4. We need to find d square which is given by minus a square equals to minus 4 square equals to minus 60. We should always remember that the denominator must be non-zero. Right? In the denominator we are having d square plus 60. Let's see what happens if we replace d squared by minus 16. We'll get minus 16 plus 16, which is equal to 0, right? So by replacing d squared by minus 16, denominator becomes 0. Then we'll get 1 by 0 into cos 4x. Since 1 by 0 is undefined, so the total term becomes undefined, right? Or I'll just show you. We have replaced d square by minus 16, then we'll get 1 by minus 16 plus 16 into cos 4x, which is equal to 1 by minus 16 plus 16 is 0 into cos 4x, which is undefined. So what we have to do? We should not replace d square by minus 16 here. Right? Write 1x into 1 by, find the derivative of the denominator. If f of d equals to d square plus 16. This is, our, this is our denominator, right? Then f dash of d is 2d plus derivative of a constant is 0, which is equal to 2d, which is non-zero, right? We can write 2d into cos 4x is equal to, we can split this as 1 by 2 into 1 by d. This becomes x by 2 into 1 by d is inverse of differential operator or inverse operator we can say. Now we need to find integral cos 4x. Okay. 1 by d is inverse of differential operator or integral operator. So we will find integral cos 4x here. Which is equal to x by 2 into integral cos 4x is sin 4x by 4 which is equal to x sin 4x by 2 fours are 8. Therefore, yp2 equals to 1 by 8 into x sin 4x. Now we can re replace the results obtained from yp1 and yp2 in yp. Right? yp equals to 1 by 15 to e power minus 3x plus 1 by 15 to cos 4x which we have written as yp1 plus yp2. Now, the result obtained from yp1 is 1 by 25 into e power minus 3x plus result obtained from yp2 is 1 by 8 into x sine 4x. So therefore, yp equals to, right? Now we can write the general solution.
the general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp then y equals to we have yc c1 cos 4x plus c2 sin 4x plus yp 1 by 25 into e power minus 3x plus 1 by 8 into x sin 4x. This completes a problem. So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equations in this video. Hope you'll understand. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.